What's up guys, I'm Zarek here, back for another VOD review. Today we're doing another Setsuko VOD review, and I should have it on 2x speed already, but someone in the comments told me how to do this. Boom! With hotkeys, with hotkeys, I sped it up. Look what else I learned how to do. Boom, I can jump back only three seconds, so now we, we can do quick jumping forward and back. Oh, you guys, you guys. I mean, I kind of should have realized that there were more hotkeys in VLC, I'm gonna be real with you guys, but now I know, and now, you know, I can like... Ooh, if we really want to look at what, what's going on at 1-2, boom, we bring it down to 1x speed for 1-2. And then boom, we bring it back up to 2x speed. Oh, it's incredible. It's incredible. Uh, in any case, this is another Setsuko game. Um, we are the day before the patch, so it's kind of weird. I don't want to like VOD review like a Yona game or something. Also, I know you guys are tired of Yona games, but I think this is a really good game to review because it showcases a playstyle that is very strong on this patch, that is what Setsuko used to hit rank 1, and it's going to be very, very strong on the new patch as well. So if you guys are looking for something that is future-proofed, uh, I got just the thing for you right here. Interesting start already with these uh, items here. Like, Gargoyle is a very obvious uh, tank item to make, and then you're left with kind of like... You would make like a Shoujin. The problem is I don't love Shoujin as an item just because it doesn't play very well. Maybe it'll play very well into stuff next patch, but this patch, it's all about the ID. You could think of going something like Spark Vow and then just holding on to the sword. Um, augment wise here, by the way, clear mind, I don't love in positions like these. Used to be great, but in spots like this now, it's really hard. You're just going to get five owed every single fight because you can't hold any pairs. Uh, and then Keepers as well, I think is only really good in stuff if you're playing into like Duelist. So I'd actually go Portable here, I think. Um, but yeah, I just don't really like Clear Mind when you don't have a strong opener already. He gets everything must go here, but I know for a fact that he actually does not take everything must go here. I think Setsuko said he's had too many free firsts with his augment, so he decides not to take it, maybe. Uh, so he just goes the portable forge here. Now, these options are pretty mediocre. Um, Death's Defiance is uh, undoubtedly the stronger item. You could go something like Death's Defiance BT, but then even... Even with that, your item's really awkward. Gold Mancer tends to be a pretty weak item here, but with this opener, I don't completely hate it. You could do something like uh, Gold Mancer Shoujin Spark here and then just play into like the RE. I, I feel like that's the right call here, but we'll see what Setsuko ends up doing. I'm not actually sure what he does here. And yeah, he does pick up the Gold Mancer, is going to opt to play this Star Weaver board, but he doesn't get it down quickly enough, which is very sad. And he also ends up going the Gargoyle on the Diana instead of a potential Spark here. He'd prefer the Rod item onto the Zyra. And also he just thinks, I mean, Gargoyle onto uh, Diana is really, really nice. So it almost looks like he's playing like a Star Weaver reroll type setup here. Um, we also get a bunch of artifacts here, which ends up punishing us for the fact that we slammed Rod onto um, onto our Zyra, though we could actually fix this by just getting the, um, the Zoe in here. The downside would be that we would lose the Zyra, who we kind of want to be able to play. But hey, look at all this gold. Wait, wait, I didn't even see. Look at this gold generation. We have, did every single item we get make gold? Gold Mancer? Uh, Gambler's Blade, Gambler's Blade. Yeah, literally, we got six items, all which generate gold. The question is, how many can we get gold out of here? There's one there. Are we going to get, yep, we're going to get that proc as well as so we made at least three gold this round. Maybe we get four gold this round. Uh, I mean, that's that's pretty hilarious. I mean, we'll, we'll take that for sure. I'll take I'll take four gold for free at 2-2. Two, two. Nothing wrong with that. Six gold gen items. I don't think I've ever seen that before. Also, somebody else said collector, collector on bench. What are they doing? What's, what's going on there? Uh, but yeah, I mean... This opener to me looks like we're going to be playing into like a, a Zoe reroll type setup, uh, like the story we were reroll. He even just calls Janna here. So yeah, like the, the Janna plus Zoe plus uh, like Diana plus Soraka type comp where you play around those guys. I've seen it a lot. You know, I when I did the VOD review on my channel a few uh, days ago, maybe a week ago at this point, I was showing off more of like the, the Zoe, Soraka, um, Diana type reroll where you push fast seven. Um, Janna reroll though, you know, a, a very, very strong way to play the comp in its own right. And the other thing about the, the Janna reroll angle um, is that it's actually gonna get buffed uh, a lot with this coming patch because at level seven, your three cost odds are going down, but your two cost odds are actually going up a good bit. So now you'll actually be able to push seven and roll for your Janna on seven, which is what this comp always wanted, right? So say you find like five Janna, six Janna's on six, you can just say, okay, I'm gonna push seven and I'm gonna find the last three. I'm gonna find the last four on level seven uh, because my two cost odds are going up next patch. Uh, which is really really nice because this is a comp that really wants to get to seven it really gets online on seven on seven you get to get all the units in but you always wanted to find jana three which is really hard to do uh on level six or on level seven because you're reducing your two cost odds by so much so uh yeah might be really really strong comp on the new patch i hate that setsuko does this where he just goes away from the 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 thing immediately like i don't, I don't even know what here like i guess i can use my new 
hotkeys to go back and, and try to see what this was, but like I, I I can't even see like like what 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 did we even get here? Like how does how does Setsuko know so quickly what it is? Does he click the thing in the top left? I actually don't understand. Also, I think I didn't go far back enough. Okay. Um that's the fight. Okay, and then it'll show here. Everyone goes, okay, so yeah, he just clicks up there so quickly. Why did, I hate, I mean, he's a genius. Like he, he actually just uses this time instead of looking at everyone goes faster and running around in the middle of the board, he uses this time to start scouting and just getting even more time to scout, which is, I mean, I mean, yeah, you're a beast, Setsuko, you're a god, you're, you're a monster, but like, come on, I want to see everyone goes faster. Okay, so it's, it, it does not matter. It is the Sivir uh, encounter here. We have once again like a pretty decent board here. The the Alawi obviously fits very beautifully onto this board because it is uh, Arcanist and it is Warden and late game you can even think about getting Ghostly in with something like Morgana. But we're probably not going to be playing like more vertical story real late game. But I've talked I've talked before about my my uh, appreciation for that little combo of units, the Morgana and the Alawi. But still fantastic unit to play on the board now. Uh, and then on level up we can think about just getting a Ghostly unit in. That's why we're holding onto this Aatrox. Um, we could think also about getting Fortune in potentially, which is what Setsuko is looking at here. Picks up the Teemo, picks up the Kobu Ko, and look at that. We can have a Stage 3 Fortune. Check what we roll here. We roll a 5, which is really, really nice just to, to guarantee that we get like a decent sized cash out here. And already he's looking at the pivot into the into the stage three fortune so this is what i was talking about actually i maybe i faked you guys out a little bit by saying you know like oh the this john reroll might be really strong on the new patch what i really think is gonna be broken on the new patch is this fortune reroll what fortune reroll is the stage three fortune setup um is the only way that they're nerfing fortunes they're nerfing five fortune a bit but you don't even need to play five fortune also augment here what do you oh well i mean it's tiny titans now for sure uh you will absolutely take that when you have fortune and um but yeah, like you, you get fortune in stage three. Fortune has not been nerfed in any way whatsoever at three fortunes, only nerfed at five fortune. Even then it's one HP per round essentially that you're losing, which is not the biggest deal. Um, but the big thing is that they're changing player damage next patch. They're making it so bigger losses actually hurt you less. If it's, I think it's anything more than a three unit loss is actually going to be less damage than before. Um, so it's actually like completely fine for you to do this sort of like full open type stuff, take things like four unit losses here when you have fortune and and guarantee that you take those losses. Um, so it's going to be even easier to take those losses next patch and just stack up an insane fortune stage three. Uh, Setsuko does the exact same thing he did last game that I uh, VOD reviewed where, yeah, he just gets the fortune in stage three, and then he's going to use this to farm up a bunch of fortune stacks, cash those out into a really, really strong board stage four. So it, uh, it makes a lot of sense. You can even maybe, I mean, at this much HP, I'm curious to see if Setsuko takes, because we're going to take two more losses here. We're 100 HP right now. So we're, we're going to be about 70 HP after the next two losses. You probably do double down. The problem is if you roll a six, uh, it gets really hard. But if you roll anything under a six, even like a four is like quite doable as, as far as getting a lot of stacks down. So we'll see what Setsuko goes for here. He's got the rod and the uh, glove open it was. Uh, yeah, it's just a TG I kind of like here. And it's on... I mean, it's a silver pair. It's uh, it's actually not even a silver pair because we sold other silver here. But you know, could be a silver too down the line, uh, and could make a TG, which would be really nice for our very likely fast nine type strategy. Well, we'll see what our cash out ends up being. But you know, if we if we get a bunch of gold, we can easily fast nine. We also get to hold on to this Lee Sin, who's a nice unit to put on the board. He's just going to make the TG immediately here because he knows that the board that he's fighting is pretty strong. There's no chance that he's going to beat this board. So he slams the TG last second onto the Koboko, gets a little bit of extra tank stats there. Uh, maybe even, I mean, we probably wouldn't have killed the Shen, but maybe we could have killed the Shen. And it's just one more round till we cash out. Like I said, it's about 70 HP, maybe, maybe high 60s, honestly, here. Because uh, our board is kind of a pile of garbage, but hey, we're playing Fortune, so makes sense. Uh, but yeah, I mean, Setsuko, the king of Fortune, he knows how to play around this so so well. Knows how to play to uh, you know his strongest board in spots where he needs to play his strongest board. His weaker board when he needs to play around weaker board. He's looking at Gubum's spot, but Gubum's is way too strong at this point. He's got the Kaisa on his board. Uh, the other downside, uh, the only downside I would say to this board is that we're carrying a Janna, and Janna. I would say it's not the best unit killing units. We dropped a 66 here after a big loss, which hurts a lot. Uh, and he is going to go for the push your luck here. I think it's 66 HP. I think that's pretty reasonable. Um, if it's a six, you you probably have to spike really hard for five and just save HP. But with a two here, we can just take two losses here, then four five it with a bunch of gold. So I like this a lot. We even got the Diana too. 
Um, so our board is our, our board's not bad at all. We pick up a Tristan here, so if we find Annie, we could play that five fortune. Um, item wise, there's not really much here. Like you could make the spark if you want to, but it doesn't really like exist here. Uh, and he is gonna move the items over to the Zoe. Uh, like I was talking about, it, it does just feel like a little bit bad to have those items on Jana when Jana's just doing such a terrible job at killing units. Zoe can at least. I mean, she's still not great at killing units, but she can at least bounce her, her little paddle star around. And look at that, 50 fortune stacks. One more loss here. We're going to be above 60. It's so, so nice. Um, and I mean, yeah, I like stationary support a lot here. I'm actually down to pull up the fortune loot table here to see what uh, what cash out we're at. If you guys haven't seen this, by the way, here, I will pull it up for you guys. Um, just go to tactics.tools, go to tools, um, tables, and then go to fortune. And boom, you can see all the fortune cash outs here. So... And I know it doesn't show, but I'm on tactics.tools. That's a website. I know I'm not moving my head, but you get the idea. I'm pretty sure you could see all that. So we are going to be at ideally the 75 gold value if we, eh, I don't know if we're getting to 75 here. I mean, 52 gold value is this one here. You can get things like a fawn, some four costs, a blacksmith's glove. This one is really, really nice. You get either like the fawns, the duplicators, all the ZZ rots. Like uh, this is a very nice one. I don't know though. I doubt that we're getting 20 stacks on a loss here. Um, we are on a, a six loss here, but I don't know what the exact number is. I, I don't think it's 20, but still 52 stack cash out is certainly uh, enough to be put into a really, really good spot here. So yeah, he is just prepping for his, uh, his level up could even be next round. Um, I'm actually down to pull this up and see like a lot of the, the fortune cash outs actually don't give you that much gold. Like the most gold that we're going to get here is 15 actually. Um, but it's really just a lot of combat strength. How many stacks? 70. Ah, that's so, we know 70 luck is the cash out. It's exactly 70. Oh my God, that's huge. So that means we're going to get that 70 luck cash out. I mean, that's beautiful from Setsuko. We get this one. That's a bunch of duplicators and a bunch of five costs. So yeah, he is just going to start pivoting his board here because there's so much that we can do here. He might even... I mean, it's it's Setsuko. Does his name start with an S and end? A, okay, I I pulled that joke earlier, and like I, it's it's kind of terrible. Um, I think he's looking at a, a fast nine here. He's looking at a nine, maybe at four or five. He's got this double duplicator, so if he finds a single Lissandra, he can duplicate that. If he finds a single Azir, he can duplicate that. He's not even taking a bad loss here. Twenty eight HP. Is he going to go nine next round though? Because he's going to be so low as far as gold if he does that. There's an Udir on Carousel that you'd really, really like to pick up here. He can carry on the Psionic Spark that we probably have to leave it on Diana for the immediate future, but maybe like later we can play around him getting Spark. Um, obviously want to pick up like an Orn or something as well. But yeah, I mean, with the double duplicators, you could, I mean, I feel like you kind of just have to level here and send it. And if you pick up one or two strong five costs, I mean, there's Lissandra, that can be Lissandra too. We can move the items over to her. Uh, we also have Udir too with the duplicator. I feel like you pop off the TG, move the items over to Lissandra. He wants to keep rolling here though. Oh, he doesn't have time actually. I mean, maybe he always didn't want to move items to to the um Lissandra. maybe he always wanted items on uh on azir here but i could certainly see just moving these three items over to Lissandra, letting her farm more look at all the gold that we're getting now and uh i mean what i think what setsuko really wanted here is he wanted to roll down to see what he could hit here because obviously like if you find Lissandra too that saves you an entire duplicator um so i think that's the idea is that he you know wanted to roll down last second it just feels a little bit bad because now he doesn't get uh you know to potentially duplicate uh or he, he doesn't get to have like AP items on Lissandra, which, you know, but eh, not the end of the world. He also fits Exalted in here, which is pretty hilarious. It looks like uh, we can actually jump back here and see what the... Uh, oh, wait, he just hovered over it. It was like Thresh plus Annie plus something, it looked like. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's Thresh plus Annie, and he had the Diana in, but he just cut the Diana and dropped out of Exalted. Interesting. What did he cut the Diana for here? Because he had it in... He had it in for a second and then he caught one of the units. I mean, this is, this is a hard turn for sure. Um, got it in like right at the start of the... Oh, I see. He cut the Janna here, got Exalted in. Um, yeah, why would you up the Janna in? He wants Janna in over Diana so he can move the items over to the Annie and to the Udir. I see. Uh, and he doesn't really care about the XP. Wow, that is a tough call from Setsuko. I do not think I would have done that, but I think it makes a lot of sense. The Spark is really, really strong on the Udir. Uh, moving the tank items over to Annie feels really good. Like, it just allows our items to be in a much better spot. Um, it just feels bad because we don't get to play Exalted on this board on a level 9 board. That's so much damage amp that we're losing out on here just to move our items over to slightly better units. But, I mean, I could I could certainly see it. Um, it's it's a tough decision to make for sure. Uh, yeah, I mean, he's just holding this John at this point. I mean, you'd want to just turn this back into the, um, into the other unit, into what we were playing before. Um, but we do not have it. He also is pretty hesitant about making this Soraka too. I mean, I feel like you do just make it, but maybe his idea is that Soraka is coming off of this board 
Uh, pick up another Udyr, another Lissandra. We're also a Zier period here. Remember, we are level 9 here. That's another Udyr too. I mean, I feel like you got to play that. Yeah, just cut the Janna, play that, and then just drop the Hue here. Only downside is we can't like have Hue paint an Udyr, but this looks pretty good. Maybe a TG? No TG. So we're just going to have to go for a Titan's Resolve onto our Udyr. Fine item for Udyr. Not uh, insane, but fine. Uh, and I mean, we really, I mean... Ideally, we have our Lissandra farm. Our items were two Lissandras here, so if we can find another Lissandra too, we'd be over the moon. The crazy thing, this is such a Setsuko game, just get insanely far ahead tempo-wise, and then use the Lissandra to farm a bunch of items, and like, how do we ever even lose this game, man? Oh, by the way, he finds the Diana here, but doesn't have the Annie on the board. Now he sold the Annie so he can move items over to, looks like it's going to be Lee Sin with the tank items, or I guess, yeah, he's just going to have one damage Udyr, one tank Udyr. Tank items on Udyr, and not to be amazing, but I mean, it is an Udyr 2. He's going to do a lot of CC. So yeah, we have a damage Udyr and a tank Udyr. This setup is so sick, actually. Uh, just with four Dragon Lord. I mean, only only Setsuko would uh, would would play a board like this. The double Udyr setup here, just with some random Dragon Lords in. Obviously, oh my god. All right, apologies. We are back to where we were just a second ago. Uh, VLC has been giving me some issues for some reason. It's great at playing these files, but ooh, that's another Lissandra. Uh, you saw here he got in the Lux here, which he loves, loves, loves to play on boards like this. And now he's just playing the double Lissandra on this board as well. Um, yeah, for some reason, VLC just kind of like crashes when I play these stream files sometimes. So now I don't have the VLC seeking and everything, but we still get to uh, see a pretty strong board. So, you know, it's it's chill. Um, but yeah, I mean, now he's he's pivoted into this board. He gets the Lux in. This is why we, a lot like the board that we saw him play last game, actually, where he really, really likes fitting in Lux uh, and Lissandra and playing around the Lissandra. He's just playing Dragonlord around that. And he fit the Exalted in, uh, which I guess Lux might be Exalted. Uh, I don't know how it fits in outside of Lux being Exalted, uh, but I guess she is. And that, you know, fits very well with Lissandra that we want to play around. Um, so it easily gets three exalted in and we're also just we get to play this twin tear basically set up with the the two lissandras and the uh the two um the two udiers we'd love to play orn on this board the downside is we're gonna drop out of exalted if we do that so we're probably not playing that here just yeah go for another lissandra item the funny thing is at this point we're triple item lissandra two uh on both of our lissandra twos and we're triple item udiers um so it's actually like like our Lissandras are probably going to farm us some more uh, items, but like, what do we even put those items on? I mean, I guess at least Sin at this point, but I mean, yeah, what a, what a crazy board. And it almost falls apart here. Like so many of our units are dying here, but we just have enough upgrades that this Udyr is able to clean up versus Phillips board. I mean, it's uh, what, what a Setsuko game and what a Setsuko board. How, how could you, you know, I, I mean, what, what is there to say? Uh, yeah, we can sell up the Orin at this point. There's no need to hold him. I mean, we're just looking to go level 10 at this point. Maybe we could fit in. I mean, we're 6-6. Six and six. Maybe if we can hit fit in a Hue on 10. The problem is we don't have five rounds to paint a five cost. Like, obviously, it would be nice to pick up a random, uh, like, two more Lissandras or, like, Hyrule Duplicator or something and then have Hue paint the last one. Uh, the problem is this game's going to be done in five rounds, probably. I mean, it's, it's the end of stage five here. I don't think everyone's living until the end of stage six. Um... And I mean, look at the HP title totals. Either we're going to die or like this guy's going to die. But I mean, you can still see Setsuko has such a priority on these Lissandras. And by the way, I wanted to say this Lissandra unit, like all the five costs in TFT next patch, is getting buffed. It's getting extra HP. It is getting an extra 200 HP at one star, which is even more HP at two star. So do not sleep on this Lissandra unit. She is an absolute monster. And I'm pretty sure the sports Setsuko has here would be performing even better if it was next patch. Literally nothing about this board, uh, as far as I can remember, was nerfed here. And Udyr was buffed as well. Obviously, a lot of other stuff is being buffed. So it's not, you know, it's, it's not a zero sum game or it, or it is a zero sum game. But still, I mean, my God, look at this board go. It is insane. Uh, we're going to win this fight. So it is top three for us here. Now we're just looking at the level 10 here. Get the Janna in for four Dragonlord. Uh, and yeah, this looks like it's just going to be our board until the end of the game. He does go really prios uh, Vertical Dragonlord as well is, is something that we've seen in a lot of these games, right? He loves just getting in that like four Dragonlord um, on boards like this. Just play Lissandra's, play uh, Udyr's, and then play Dragonlord here. Uh, if we didn't have the Exalted we had, we could be playing like Ornn, uh, Azir potentially if we didn't have all these duplicates. Uh, but yeah, he just really loves these units. And I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty easy to see why. There's a Lissandra, by the way, in shop. Uh, fill up at two HP. Um, we are, we'd be too off. I don't know if Philip is holding any Lissandras. Um, he scouted real quick. He's scouting too quickly there. I don't see a Lissandra the way he's scouting though. Um, so 
all good, I guess. Uh, but I mean, can can Philip beat this board? I mean, it would be hilarious if he could, because then we could go digging for Lissandrathy. And it's really, really close here, actually. Wukong manages to wrap and kill our backline. Yeah, we do end up losing this fight. Pick up a Lissandra. We are two Lissandras off here. Uh, oh, and that's a Lissandra on Carousel. Mm, we, I mean, the item doesn't matter. What matters is Lissandra. We are one off and we lost that fight. Oh my god. Well, that was easy. There's Lissandra 3 at 6-5. Uh, he just had to roll one time to hit it. And now we can we can just watch Lissandra 3 in all of her glory in this last fight here. So I'm down to slow it down to 1x speed. He moves her up to guarantee that she's going to cast. Put it on normal speed. Let's watch this last fight here. Throws a, throws a random and throws a QSS down. He's going to auto a couple of times. And then she's going to cast here. And she pots every single unit into a giant pot in the middle. Gets a bunch of gold, a bunch of items. And that is going to be the game. She dealt like 12k true damage there or something like that. That was pretty funny. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this VOD. Crazy sets go VOD as they all are. Ending with Lissandra 3. What else? I mean, uh, how can you? How can you? How can you? How can you? Hope you guys enjoyed. Um, once again... I don't know what my once again is. Oh yeah, I think this this comp will be even stronger next patch, which is coming out tomorrow. Uh, I'll do lots of content for tomorrow's patch as you know people play on it and stuff like that. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, comment, subscribe, check out my Twitch, and I'll make the links down below. Thanks for watching.